Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell EMC PowerEdge R640 server memory upgrades and how to properly install and configure the server. Well, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the Dell EMC R640 server today. Uh, so let's just go ahead and hop in and get started. For, uh, for starters, this is the next gen to the very popular R630. The big difference really is the CPUs inside. And on that note, there are two CPU sockets. They are an LGA3647. They take Intel uh, scalable second gen procs. So that means um, silver 4100 series, gold uh, 516100 series, uh, platinum 8100 series. Uh, there are 24 DIMM slots as far as the memory is concerned. Uh, it takes DDR4, DDR4 memory, same as um, the R630, the prior gen. Um, as far as the memory, there's a couple of different uh, speeds you can use. You can go as low as 2133 up to 2400, uh, 2666, uh, 2933, and then top out at 3200. Now, from what I've seen with 3200, it'll actually clock back down to 2933, uh, but it would physically work, and you know, you'd be able to actually get it to register with them. So, um, on uh, the uh, types of sizes you can use, you can use as low as a 4 gig, even though I wouldn't recommend that, uh, 8 gig, 16 gig, uh, 32 gig, 64 gig, and if you're using LRDIMs, all the way up to 128 gigabytes. Now, there's two types of memory that you can use, and really there's actually three, but there's two main types that uh, is, are most prevalent and those two types are ECC registered also known as RDIM or load reduced memory known as LRDIM. With ECC registered you can max out at 1.5 terabytes and that would be using 24 64 gigabytes but for that you do have to have uh, scalable second gen procs and the uh, fastest you can go is again 3200 but it'll probably clock down to uh, 2933. With uh, LR DIMMs, you actually have double the capacity and you can do three terabytes using 24 by 128 gigabytes, again, at uh, 3200 megahertz. Now, the real winner is Intel Optane. Intel Optane, you can go all the way up to 7.68 gigabytes, I'm sorry, 7.68 uh, terabytes, uh, and it's pretty awesome because there's a couple different sizes of uh, modules you can use with these. Uh, the lowest, and it sounds crazy saying this is the lowest, is a 128 gigabyte, and then you have a 256 gigabyte, and then you can actually top out with a 512 gigabyte, which just sounds crazy because that used to be a whole machine would be 512s, and now you can put it into a single module with Intel Optane, which is pretty cool. So the way that you uh, can actually truly max this system out, because with Intel Optane, you can't actually put in 24 of them. You can put in 12 of them, and you have to put them in the first channel of each, um, or the first DIMM slot of each channel, uh, which we'll show you in a minute here how to actually do that. Uh, but with Intel Optane, you can do 12 512 gigabytes, plus uh, 12 128 gigabyte load reduced modules and that'll get you up to 700 uh, uh, 7.68 terabytes which is honestly just insane when you think about that from uh, a memory uh, capacity of that kind of size. That really almost sounds like storage uh, more than memory, but anyhow, that's uh, pretty awesome. So that's the, the overall max. So uh, let's go ahead and open it up. We'll show you a little bit more about the channels that we were talking about, how to actually install the modules and all that good stuff. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Uh, you always want to protect the machine from electrostatic discharge. Uh, last thing you want to do is damage it while you're installing it. So I'm going to grab that and I'll be right back. Now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. First things first, make sure your latch is set to unlock. Simply pop it open. Very easy, just like uh, pretty much any server you have ever dealt with. <laughs> uh, one thing I would like to note uh, before we get too far, and I'll show you all the stuff on the memory, uh, we kind of uh, skipped over the storage in the beginning since this is a memory video, uh, but I did want to note there are a couple different styles of chassis for the 640. Um, this one is a 10 bay small form factor, uh, but you have four different options. You can get a 4 bay uh, large form factor, which actually I'm very excited about because uh, they used to never have for the one use um, any of them being 4 bay large form factor except for uh, like in the um, the 4 series, so it would be like the 410 had it or the um, 420 or something like this, but uh, for as far as the 6 series, the 610, 620, 630, they were all small form factor, so this was pretty cool to see um, them come out with a large form factor chassis for the um, uh, uh, for the 640. So anyhow, there's the 4 bay uh, large form factor, there's the 8 bay small form factor, the 10 bay small form factor, and then there's also another 10 bay, and it's an NVMe, and it's a small form factor as well. Um, so as far as storage is concerned, uh, 
uh, that's the type of chassis that you can use. You can use SSDs or hard drives inside of it um, either way, and you can put a, a ton of storage in here overall. So anyhow, we're going to get back to the memory since that's what we're here for today. Um, so now that we're uh, open the top and we're in here, I'm going to show you how to actually access the DIMMs. For the most part, they're pretty available, but one thing that's a nice feature that Dell has also improved upon is there's just an air baffle. Okay, so once I lift the air baffle up, uh, which is pretty simple, you just pop right here. Uh, but once I move the air baffle, I have full access to all the DIMMs. It used to be there, uh, there was a f uh, all the fan modules were right here, and you'd have to actually disconnect them and put them to the side, which I mean wasn't hard, uh, but really you don't want to ever have to disconnect anything uh, unless you really need to. So it's kind of a nice improvement in my opinion there. So um, anyhow, now that we're in, let's talk about the DIMMs. So uh, as we discussed, there are two CPUs, uh, CPU one and CPU2. CPU1 is going to control the 12 DIMM slots over here. CPU2 is going to control the 12 DIMM slots over here. This is important for a number of reasons. If you were only using, say, one CPU, you could not use any of the DIMM slots over here without another CPU. It just wouldn't register. There's you know, no way to physically boot them or access them, so you would need to make sure that you are using all the modules over here. On that note, when you are configuring the system, you always need to make sure that you start at the beginning of the channel. So for CPU 1, that is going to be slot A1. And the nice thing is that Dell's actually labeled all this. So if you look, uh, and it's, you can't see it on video, but when you have this machine at home, right in between on the motherboard, in between the DIMM slots, each slot is labeled. So this is actually A1, followed by A2, followed by A3, followed by A4, followed by A5, followed by A6. And the, the reason behind this, as opposed to let's just say it being you know A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all together, is that you want to have a nice distribution and a proper um, balance across the load for your memory. So basically, uh, if you were installing only, as we said, six DIMMs with one, um, one CPU, you would want to do it uh, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. And again, this is just a, for a proper uh, balance across this, uh, the system. So it, same thing goes, let's say you were installing 12 DIMMs um, and you had two CPUs, you would want to continue the same concept of using all the white DIMM slots. Uh, that's just the proper way to do it. Uh, you're going to skip the second DIMM in each channel, which happens to be the black DIMM. Uh, uh, tab, okay? And over here, again, Dell's labeled it, so it's B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6. So it's it's very easy to do uh, as long as you kind of understand what you're doing. And a video like this could uh, make it easier for you to do as well if you weren't 100% sure on how to, you know, properly install the RAM as a whole. So, uh, of course, if you're maxing it out, which we're about to do with this machine here, you want to do just every DIMM slot, and it really doesn't matter where you start as long as they're all uh, filled up. So on that note, we're actually going to go ahead and, and uh, load this bad boy up. So before we do, one of the things I wanted to note to you is um, <clears throat> every module has a key, also this uh, uh, notch right here. And this key is important because um, it prevents users from, one, putting in the wrong memory, so you couldn't put in like a DDR2 or DDR3 module, uh, but it's important because you don't want to uh, have it facing the wrong way. The module is actually not perfectly in the middle. Uh, it's uh, slightly to the side. And if you were to uh, install it instead of, say, it needs to be installed this way, if I were to flip it the wrong way, then it could actually damage the DIMM slot, which means I might have to replace the motherboard, or it could damage the module itself. So uh, the last thing you want is to put it in the wrong way and um, damage something just from a user error. So simple things like that just to make sure uh, that you're doing. So another thing that I like to note personally is whenever I'm installing modules, I personally like to uh, push all these tabs down. Uh, have them all just wide open to start. So when I'm putting the modules in, uh, I don't have anything fighting me. I'm not fumbling around. It's just a nice, easy, smooth process. Um, and another thing that I personally do when I'm completely maxing it out, and I have to preface that because if you are going to be um, 
uh, only putting in you know a certain amount of dims, you've got to use the start of the channel as we had just discussed. But if I'm maxing it out, one of the things that I personally like to do is to kind of get some of these tough edges where I'm you know up against a wall or I'm up against a heat sink. I kind of like to start there just because it's a tighter squeeze and just a little bit easier for me, just simple things like that. Um, and one thing I, I did want to note since we were talking about the channels, uh, for anyone out there that is using the Intel Optane uh, memory, the only slots that you're going to actually put your Intel Optane in is going to be the white slots. And then uh, and the black slot would be your LRDIM or ECC reg that you're uh, pairing with it. I'm assuming if you're using this, you're probably maxing it out to something pretty incredible. And I would actually love for you to drop a comment and tell me what what you're actually what application you're using it for with uh, Optane memory because that's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, but you would put all the Optanes in the white slots, um, and then you would put your um, 128 gig LRDIMs in the black slots. So uh, that's how you would uh, properly load the Optane memory. So yeah, anyway, I'm uh, going to go ahead and actually load this with some 30. 2 gig ECC reg for a local customer here um, and one of the things that I always like to note too when I'm putting these in again I'm going to line it up make sure my notches are all good when you put the module in okay sometimes people will feel like oh I got the module in and, and you know I can let my hands go it's in but it's not really in uh, so what you need to make sure is you hear this click right here so listen for this and you hear it on both sides that's how you know the modules fully inserted um, otherwise, that's when you know it's not uh, properly lined up or you just maybe didn't push it in all the way. Uh, sometimes, um, and I especially find this for uh, older machines like the DDR3 machines, uh, you have to push kind of hard um, to, to get the module fully inserted. And I'm not saying to manhandle it or anything like that. You've got to be gentle with modules. Um, but sometimes you have to push a little bit harder than you probably would like to make sure that it's fully inserted. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and load all these up and uh, just show you how easy it really is. And voila, just like that, we got 24 dims entered. Um, you know, in real time, I know we just fast forwarded through a bunch of that, but in real time that was, you know, only a couple of minutes. It's a, it's a simple process. Um, and really, it's one of the things that we always tell uh, some of our customers is, you know, if you're looking to uh, extend the life of your machine or increase their performance, uh, you know, the processors are always so far ahead of everything else um, that really the best thing that you can do is increase your RAM. Um, we really find that for I mean, pretty much every application out there, whether it's virtualization, whether you're managing a corporate environment, or even a small to medium business, like the the uh, the modules are what's kind of lagging sometimes. Um, so increasing the modules is, um, or increasing your memory is really, you know, what we always recommend. I feel like that's what gives you the biggest boost as far as just bang for your buck. Um, you know, CPUs are important as well, but you know, if everything's already lagging behind your CPU, kind of what's the point of upgrading it, right? So anyhow, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put this back together. Um, really, it's not that hard. You're just going to put the air baffle back in, but you know, wanted to say thank you. And if you've made it this far, uh, do us a favor and uh, smash that subscribe button. Uh, if you need any upgrades for your 640, or even if you need a 640, because we sell uh, custom built servers as well, do us a favor and please uh, give us a ring or email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And thanks again for stopping by. Have a great day.